Good morning. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Senate President Warren Peterson. I'm surrounded by um, several senators, members of the community and law enforcement. Um, especially, uh, I'd like to welcome two of our uh, sponsors, Senator Gowan and Senator Champ. We'll be hearing from them shortly. Um, as far as senators, we also have Senator Kavanaugh, Senator Bennett, Majority Leader Borelli, Senator Carroll, Sen our whip, uh, Senator Kerr. Um, we also have Sheriff David Rhodes from Yavapai County, Lieutenant Ross Teeple from Pinal County. Uh, they will provide testimony to us shortly. We're here today because as you know, Arizona is in a crisis. We have a crisis at the border and this is directly due to the negligent action by the Biden administration. We're facing a historical and unprecedented time where we're literally seeing a federal government opposing states who are trying to protect their border. Over the last year, we've seen a record setting number of people, tens of thousands of people crossing the border every single month through Mexico. This is from countries all over the world. We've been told this is, we have seen over 160 different countries entering in through the border. And these aren't just innocent families looking for a better life. These are human smugglers, child sex traffickers, rapists, murderers, terrorists, dangerous criminals. They're bringing with them enormous amount of drugs, especially fentanyl. One in five, uh, we're seeing one to five deaths um, in Arizona. Every, every day, fentanyl is claiming lives of people here in Arizona. Our local county, state, law enforcement, they're overwhelmed and they're outnumbered. Our county sheriffs and deputies have reached their breaking point. They're putting their lives at risk. Some of these stories we've heard are absolutely harrowing. Just put yourselves in this position of some of these law enforcement people where they literally have cartel members threatening them. They're so brazen and unafraid, they'll literally call the police station with death threats. I mean, this is, it's unbelievable what our law enforcement has to deal with. We've got to stop the, uh, this madness. And the lack of the federal government acting means that states have to assert more of their authority. We've got to do something. Nothing is not an option. Senator Champ and Senator Gowan are introducing legislation to arm our law enforcement with the tools they need to combat Biden's border cr crisis. So we'll first hear from Senator Champ, Senator Gowan, and then if the sheriffs that, that are here, if you, we'd love to hear from them as well and then we'll open it up for some Q&A from all of you folks. Thank you very much. Senator Champ. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. When you've visited our southern border and you've witnessed with your own eyes what's actually going on, you can be nothing but horrified. This is not things that people easily forget. This isn't something that shouldn't be covered. When you've had conversations with border sheriffs and law enforcement, such as the men we have here today with us, the atrocities that they face daily, you don't forget it. And when you've spoken with families who've lost loved ones to border-related crimes, like smuggling de deadly fentanyl, we've heard it reported that over 50% of the fentanyl that is confiscated on the streets of our entire country come through Arizona. And thanks to the Biden administration's refusal to secure our border, the illegal activity, which includes unprecedented amounts of human trafficking, drug smuggling, these are no longer mere issues. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the thick of an invasion. Our law enforcement is overwhelmed by the chaos created by Biden's open border policies. They don't have the resources or the support needed to combat the magnitude of the criminal activity that is going on. And our communities are in danger. Need I remind each and every one of you, every state is a border state. This needs to be taken seriously. This is a matter of both local and national security. 
It's time to take the handcuffs off of our sheriffs who have been elected to protect the citizens of Arizona, which is why I'm introducing the Arizona Border Invasion Act, SB 1231. Joe Biden and his administration have made it unequivocally clear that they have abandoned their duties to enforce immigration policy at the federal level. Their refusal to enforce border security laws has resulted in tens of thousands of illegal migrants being released into our communities. The Arizona Border Invasion Act will make it a crime to enter our state anywhere but a lawful entrance point. Again, this will take the handcuffs off of our state and local law enforcement, allowing them to arrest individuals who are not following our laws. This bill will also address illegal re-entry by establishing state law against non-U.S. citizens who enter if they have already been denied entry or have been removed. Through both inaction and opposition, Democrat politicians are supporting the humanitarian crisis at the border. They're supporting the increase in human smuggling, sex trafficking, rape, murder, modern day slavery, and the fentanyl crisis. The things that I have witnessed as a nurse, I pray none of you ever have to see, but it's something that needs to be exposed. The Arizona Border Invasion Act will give our law enforcement the tools to protect our state from this crisis. I want to personally thank Sheriff Rhodes, Sheriff Daniels, Sheriff Lamb, Sheriff Wilmot, Commander Bob Watkins, and Lieutenant Teeple, some of who are here today, for all of their hard work protecting us, the Arizona citizens. This bill has unanimous support from the Sheriff's Association. I hope our elected sheriffs and their officers will get the tools that they need and deserve to keep all of us safe. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Senator Gowan to introduce his bill. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out here. As you guys know, I live in Sierra Vista, 20 miles from the border. So we have this incursion happening down there all the time. And so you know, I'm all too familiar with the Biden administration's uh, open border policy and the crisis it's creating down there. My constituency is as well. And what you've heard from the previous speakers here is absolutely true. We need to get control of this border right now. It's a border crisis. And with these two bills, we're going to see some good effects happening. And as the president stated earlier, when the federal government fails in its duties, protects its borders and its citizens, that duty falls to the states. And we're having trouble, even with the federal government, allowing us, per se, to do our own jobs. During the border briefing we had on the House floor last week, my sheriff, Cochise County uh, Sheriff Mark Daniels, described the border crisis as the ugliest he's ever seen. When it comes to public safety, national security, and humanitarian conditions, and I agree, and I believe everybody here agrees with that. The sheriff said that over the last two years, law enforcement has arrested 600 drivers for smuggling. That's over a year, 600 smugglers driving. And that law enforcement has engaged in over 400 felony pursuits. Do you imagine that? These encounters have often resulted in dangerous and deadly high speed pursuits. Arizona Southern communities and local law enforcement are under attack. Reckless drivers smuggling both humans and drugs across the border have put countless lives in danger by attempting to flee enforcement at any cost. And let me tell you, they drive through my town at 120 miles an hour many times. Our communities down in the south they jump over Highway 90 boundaries. They go northbound on southbound traffic with their lights out at night. Now I have to tell you folks, my son goes to the University of Arizona. He lives at my house. That's a 75 mile trip each way. And when he's coming home, I wanna know he's protected and not have to worry that you have illegal activity occurring with a wrong way driver coming up, trying to speed away from 
our police officers to evade their criminal act and could crash into my child's vehicle. We should all be thinking about that, every one of you that has a child out there should be thinking about this stuff. They don't just hurt the, the driver they hit, by the way. What they're hauling, when you have the, the illegal immigrants that are in the back of that, they hurt them just as well. It's humanitarian all around. I've introduced legislation to increase penalties for drivers who endanger the life of another person while attempting to flee law enforcement and even greater penalties if the driver causes serious physical injury to another person or is transporting a minor. Our state and local law enforcement are putting their lives on the line daily to protect our communities and it's clear they need all of our support. Tougher penalties in these situations are an absolute must and protecting our families and our communities are an absolute must. And I think the the County uh, um, Attorney's Association for bringing this bill to me with the County Sheriff's Association. This is a needed, needed bill. Both of these bills are. And I hope you get this out. And let me invite you once again, as I have in the past, every one of you, you want to come down and see the border? I'll show it to you. Just give me a call. You tell me when you want to come down. Let's look at it. You have that open invitation. With that, I want to thank you guys uh, for being here with us. Thank you, Mr. President, for having this and, and Senator Shamp. God bless you guys. Thank you. Sheriff Rhodes. Sheriff, Sheriff Rhodes. <clears throat> Good morning, David Rhodes, Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. I just wanted to point out that the Arizona Sheriff's Association is in support of this legislation. I have been in contact with Sheriff Mark Daniels, uh, Sheriff Leon Wilmont, Mark Daniels of Cochise County, Leon Wilmont of Yuma County, and I will share with you some of the things that they said. The difficulty that they have when they encounter people who have crossed in various areas of the desert, not at the port of entry, clearly uh, entering at an unauthorized uh, location on the border, uh, local law enforcement officials, sheriff's deputies, don't have the ability to detain these individuals uh, currently unless they're committing a state crime, even though it is very clear that they have crossed the border or most likely illegally. I will say this, uh, the sheriffs are in no way attempting to be uh, investigating immigration law. This is about providing tools to local law enforcement to secure the southern border. Very simply put, if you're coming across the border at a location where you're not author where nobody is authorized to do so, local law enforcement will have, should this bill pass, local law enforcement will have the ability to stop, detain, charge you with misdemeanor, uh, work if, if you're coming across uh, illegally or if you're in the country illegally, then uh, work with uh, Border Patrol on your deportation proceedings. It's no more complicated to, than that. We've received a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, but I want to uh, be as clear as I possibly can. Uh, the Arizona Sheriff's Association are not espousing in any way that local law enforcement get involved in enforcing immigration law. We're only looking for tools that allow us to assist in this fight. And I will just say this, none of this would be happening if our federal government, and I'm not talking about the boots on the ground, federal law enforcement officers that are on the border that are working very hard to keep us safe and secure the border every single day. I'm talking about our elected leaders and our administrative uh, leaders in the executive branch. They need to get off the couch and do something now. The time has passed. I was told over a month ago that they are negotiating uh, a budget or a, a border package. We have seen nothing, we have heard nothing, still nothing has happened. This term gets thrown around all the time that it's a crisis. And in law enforcement world, the crisis is it's all hands on deck and nobody leaves until the job is done. That's not what's happening right now with our leadership in Washington, D.C. So until that time, uh, the sheriffs are gonna continue to look for tools, whether it's um, 
the Border Trespassing Act, whether it is asset forfeiture, whether it is mandatory minimums on fentanyl, dealers, uh, human smuggling, the, um, the Felony Pursuit Bill, we're going to continue to look for tools to keep Arizona safe because that's what they're asking us to do. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Well said. We have another sheriff. Lieutenant, did you want to say? Yeah. I can speak. Good morning. I'm not a sheriff. My boss, Mark Lamb, uh, asked me to come down today and say a couple words. I'm really appreciative of you guys coming out today. I'm, I'll keep this very simple. I served the United States Navy during Desert Storm, and the whole world recognized that 80,000 people from Iraq, when they invaded another country, that was an invasion. And I just need you to put it in perspective that that's how many people crossed our border last two weeks alone by the lowest estimates. We're overwhelmed. When I started with the Sheriff's Office in 20, or, uh, 2007, we would get into a border-related smuggling pursuit maybe once every other week. It's multiple times a day now. They like to say that Pinal County is not a border county, but I would ask every single one of you to get, go for a ride with me in my patrol vehicle and I will take you to the loadout stations where they load up the migrants just south of Interstate 8 in Pinal County. That's how bad and how porous our border has gotten because the federal government is not doing their job. So if I have to go and patrol those areas, that's taking away from our communities and making them less safe. Our federal government needs to do their jobs and I appreciate the senators doing what they can to help us out and help local law enforcement out. Thank you.